Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Read for the visually impaired and for small device users, please use the link at any time. One month ago, when we last looked at the Fed's update of Treasuries held in custody, we noted something troubling. The number had continued to drop sharply, declining by another $14 billion in one week and pushing the total amount of custodial paper to $2.788 trillion, the lowest since 2012. And one month later, we refresh this chart and find that in last week's update, there is finally some good news. Foreign central banks finally bought some U.S. paper held in the Fed's custody account, which following months of liquidation rose over the past two weeks by $23 billion the biggest two-week advance since November of 2016, pushing the total amount of custodial paper to $2.816 trillion, the highest since early October. And here is a chart for you, Treasuries held in custody at the Fed. Okay. That was the good news. And we use the term loosely, inasmuch as the custodial custody account can be used as a proxy of foreign buying, which according to most rate watchers, it can. The bad news came out with the release of latest monthly Treasury International Capital data for the month of October, which showed that the troubling trend presented one month ago has accelerated to an unprecedented degree. Recall that in mid-November we reported that in the latest 12 months, we observed a record $375 billion in Treasury selling by foreign central banks in the period August 2015 to September 2016, something unprecedented in size. Fast forward to today, when in the latest monthly update for the month of October, we find that what until a month ago was merely a record $375 billion in offshore central bank sales in the LTM period ending September 30 has one month later risen to a new all-time high $403 billion in treasuries sold in the past 12 months. As the chart below shows, there has never been such an aggressive selling of U.S. treasuries over a 12-month period in history. And here it is, the LTM Treasury purchasers, uh, purchases sales by foreign central banks in the billions. Look at that. The biggest seller, and keep in mind that TIC data is on a market price adjusted basis, was once again China, which in October sold a record $41 billion in U.S. paper. The actual underlying number, whilst different as this particular series, is adjusted for marked mark to market variations will be similar and a massive 125 billion in the last four months bringing its total treasury holdings to just 1.116 trillion the lowest amount of u.s paper held by beijing since 2010. in the process china has now been overtaken by japan for the top u.s creditor position in terms of total holdings with $1.132 trillion for just the second time. And here's another chart showing tr China's Treasury holdings. It wasn't just China. Belgium, which has long been rumored to be the venue where China keeps its secret offshore Treasury holdings courtesy of Euroclear, also dumped its TSY holdings in, in October its stated holdings, which again have to be adjusted for MTM, tumbled from $143 billion to 
17 billion, the lowest since the summer of 2015. Here are the Belgium Treasury holdings, as indicated. And furthermore, as we have shown previously, when superimposing China and Belgium's holdings together, these tend to align almost perfectly with the monthly change in Chinese reserves, which, as reported before, have been declining sharply in recent months as a result of China's aggressive attempts to prevent a sharp devaluation of the yuan. This can be seen on the chart below and confirms that at least when it comes to China, the reason for the selling of treasuries has been due to reserve liquidation. And here's the China-Belgium Treasury Holdings comparison. Okay, it's pretty, pretty similar. As we pointed out one month ago, what has become increasingly obvious is that both foreign central banks, sovereign wealth funds, reserve managers, and virtually every other official institution in possession of U.S. paper is liquidating their holdings at a disturbing pace, something which in light of the recent surge in yields to over two-year highs appears to have been a prudent move. Now, in some cases, like China, this is to offset devaluation pressure. In others, such as Saudi Arabia and other petroleum exporting nations, it is to provide the funds needed to offset the drop in the petrodollar and to backstop the country's soaring budget deficit. In all cases, it may suggest concerns about a spike in future debt issuance by the U.S., especially now, under the pro-fiscal stimulus Trump administration. So who are they selling to? The answer, at least until August, was private demand. In other words, just like in the stock market, the retail investor is the final bag holder. So when it comes to U.S. Treasuries, private investors, both foreign and domestic, are soaking up hundreds of billions in central bank holdings. As we said, two months ago when we observed this great rotation in treasuries out of official holders into private hands, we wonder if they would keep buying, knowing who is selling to them. Well, last month this changed, and after private investors have been happily snapping up bonds for four straight months, in September other foreign investors sold a whopping $31 billion bringing the total outflow between public and private foreign holdings to $76.6 billion, the second highest number on record. In October, while foreign official entities sold another $45 billion, at least the pace of selling by private entities moderated somewhat to only $18.3 billion. Meanwhile, just four months ago, yields had tumbled to near all-time lows. Suddenly, the picture is inverted, and long yields are surging on concerns that not only will the ECB and the BOJ soon taper their purchases of the long end, but that Donald Trump is about to unleash a $1 trillion debt tsunami at a time when the Fed will not be able to monetize it now that the Fed is again hiking rates. While it is unclear under what conditions foreign buyers may come back. After all, TSY rates have already jumped high enough to where U.S. paper should be more than attractive to foreign official institutions. And one thing is clear. As of this moment, the selling strike not only continues, but it is accelerating. And should the foreign liquidation of treasuries fail to slow, Yellen will soon have to plan how to not only abort the current rate experiment, which continues to pressure high yields higher around the globe, but to start thinking about how to launch QE4 instead. Yeah. Okay. So this is the picture of what's happening as of China dumping treasuries and foreign banks liquidating 